Why? If your tumble dryer is no longer heating, there could be a number of reasons for it, and one of them is the heater itself. So in this video, I'll be replacing the heater in a Creda T510 VW tumble dryer. Turn the machine around and remove the small dust cover from over the rear bearing housing. Then undo all the screws from around the heater cover. With this cover off you now have access to the heater element, thermostat and fan. At this point before anything else is done take a photo of the wires and connections on the thermostats and heater to help you when you come to reassemble it. Now before you start dismantling the machine it would be best to check whether the heater is faulty or not. And to do this, first remove the two wires from the heater that connect onto the thermostats. Then check the resistance across both wires. If you get a reading, the heater is fine. As you can see, there is a reading with this heater, so we know that it's OK. Now the next components to test are the thermostats. As with the heater, these stats are OK. However, if there is no reading on the meter, then it would indicate that there's a fault with either the heater or the thermostat, and that particular component needs replacing. Just for this video, let's assume this heater is faulty, and continue from there. Separate the wires by cutting the nylon cable ties, then unscrew the cable retainer. You'll also need to undo the wire tie holding the cable to the cabinet. Undo the three screws at the back of the lid and remove it. This will give you access to one screw on top at the front of the machine, which will need to come off, as well as the internal screws holding the fascia panel on. Tilt the machine over and remove the screws underneath. Then stand it upright again and take out the screws down the back edge of the panel. There is another screw on the front edge of the cabinet under the kick strip, so the kick strip will need to be removed before you can get to it. You may need to lever the kick strip off with the aid of a screwdriver because some of the clasps are hooked in very tight. The fascia panel is held on by two screws, but be careful because they are sighted very close to the pointed end of these other screws, which make them very hard to hold once they've been undone. And unless you're using a magnetic tip screwdriver, you could drop them into the cabinet. Not such a problem while you're taking the machine apart but it would be hard to recover them when you're putting it back together. The control knob is very tight and the best way to remove it is to cover it with an old rag to prevent scratch marks then grip it with a pair of pliers and pull it off that way. The fascia will now come off if you slide it to the right slightly but remember there are still wires connecting it to the cabinet via the half heat button so be careful when removing it. Once these wires have been taken off the panel can be placed safely out of the way. Now you can undo the final three screws holding the side panel in place and it too can be removed and put to one side out of the way. The two wires attached to the heater that go through the cabinet into the machine are connected to the internal wiring by a plug assembly which just pulls apart and the heater wires can then be fed back through the hole. You may have to remove the remaining thermostat wires, if like this machine they're entwined with the heater wires, but if not, then leave them alone. The heater is held in place by tabs on the frame. The upper ones hook into slots in the cabinet and need to be lifted upwards to free them, while the lower tabs just fit into the cabinet at an angle to hold it in place. The small panel just above the heater on the left hand side also acts to hold the heater in place and in some cases needs to be removed, but in most cases it can be left where it is and just unhook from the heater. With the heater out give the area a quick brush over, just to clean it up and remove any loose dust because this will get blown onto the heater and may give off a burning smell. When fitting a new heater remember that the top tags need to be located first and it will also need to be sighted into the small retaining panel on the left before the lower tabs are inserted into the cabinet. Refitting the thermostat wires are pretty straightforward, but just to be on the safe side, you may want to check your previously taken photo to make sure you're connecting to the correct terminal.
Make sure you reconnect the wiring clamp to the cabinet as well as the tie cables to keep the wires in a tight group or they could get caught on the heater and short circuit. Now there is a far easier and quicker method of changing the heater which involves cutting the two connecting wires on the 40 unit that go into the cabinet and cutting the plug from the new heater. These wires can then be joined together from outside the cabinet therefore eliminating the need to remove the side panel and any other associated part such as lid, fascia and kickstrip. A large number of engineers use this method to save time on dismantling. However, I will emphasise that you can quite easily cut the wrong wires and find yourself in all sorts of difficulties. So unless you feel really confident, the longer version of this repair would be the safest. The only reason I mention it is there's bound to be people who will say there is a quicker way to do the job. But for your own sake, work safely. The plug only fits into the socket one way, so you won't be able to fit it in correctly. When you replace the side panel, it fits onto the base of the cabinet and inside the back panel. Replace the screws in whatever order you want, but it may be wise to leave the underside screws until last because the machine has to be tilted to fit them. Make sure all the wires are tucked inside and tight against the heater frame before you fit the cover, or they may get snagged and cause a short circuit. Before you replace the bearing dust cover, just give the bronze earth strip a quick check to make sure it's in good condition and making good contact with the drum shaft, because this is the only means of earthing the inner drum to the cabinet. Don't forget to replace the screw at the front of the machine before you refit the kick strip. Remember to attach the wires to the half heat switch before you refit the fascia panel. As I said when taking these screws out, be careful of the pointed tips of the other two screws or you could end up dropping them into the cabinet and without an extendable magnet you may not be able to get them out again. It only remains to refit the control knob, put the top on and screw it down and the job's done. But before you switch it on, be safe and do an earth continuity test. You'll at least know if the machine's earthed or not. On behalf of Selfix UK, we'd like to thank you for watching this video and hope you found it interesting. Goodbye.